Another sick and emaciated lion is taken out of the veterinary holding pens. Dr. DeVault Kitt, chief state veterinarian in the Kruger Park, is baffled. Never in his career has he seen a lion in such a shocking state. The Kruger National Park is situated on the southern tip of the African continent and is home to one of the world's largest free-ranging lion populations. Inside the park, slowly and secretively, a tragedy is unfolding. To date, 35 lions in this condition have been found on the savannas of Kruger Park. Many have old fighting wounds that won't heal. They are dehydrated. They are missing important canine teeth. Some are blind. Their symptoms indicate to Devault that the animals are under some form of severe stress and that their immune systems are failing. Most of the time, Divault has no option but to put the sick lions out, delivering them from their suffering. As always, he hopes that the sad carcass might hold some clue. It is by now a well-known fact that some of the buffalo in Kruger Park are infected with bovine tuberculosis, or TB, a disease of the lungs that in humans is one of the biggest killers in the world. TB is not indigenous to Africa. It is believed that the disease was transmitted in the 1960s when imported and infected cattle grazed within the borders of the park. As in humans, the disease is transmitted by air. Over time, buffalo have become the host carriers of the bacteria. <laughs> After many necropsies, tests, and research, Divault confirms TB in free-ranging lions, the first known incidents in history. It was somehow inevitable that lions would become infected with the disease. Lions prey on buffalo, and they also prey on the sick and the injured. Divald's main concern is now the 2,000 free-ranging lions in the park. Are the sick emaciated lions that are found in the savannas isolated cases? Or are they the first warning of a vast and terrible problem? For nearly a year, Devolve battles to develop a reliable test that can confirm TB infection in living lions. The test is a scientific breakthrough, but more importantly, it is also just the tool he needs to confirm the status of the lion population in general. When he performs the test on a single lion in the holding pens, he has good results. But the major challenge lies in establishing the status of the large free-ranging prides. Default is in his own worst nightmare. First, the pride has to be called in to the bait. A zebra carcass is secured to a tree to attract the lions. Default and his team are preparing the tranquilizing darts for the gas-operated dart gun. Well, initially, um, this drug has got a relatively low pH, so it's slightly acidic, and it burns the moment it gets injected into the muscle. The lions will only be tranquilized at night to minimize the stress on the animals. The only way to administer the TB test is by knocking the lions out for a short period. Time is of the essence. It is crucial that as many lions as possible are darted in the shortest possible time.
Once a lion is unconscious, Default injects tuberculin into prepared areas on both sides of its neck. Then, the next challenge, one with no guarantee of success. After three days, Default has to go back and find the very same lions. Lions that roam free in an area the size of a small country. The entire procedure has to be repeated. Again, these lions must be lured into the bait and shot with darts filled with tranquilizer. With the lions unconscious, Devault reads the test. If the infected area in the lion's neck is swollen, red and inflamed, it is classified as TB positive. Tonight, Devault is testing one of the largest and oldest lion prides in the Kruger National Park. For more than a hundred years, a stable unit of related females have raised their cubs in this specific area. Eight of the 18 members of the Pride are being tested. As Default collects the tissue samples, the horrifying truth unfolds. Every single lion is testing positive for the disease. Gradually, the awful realization sinks in. If each of the lions tested has proved positive, it must mean that the majority of the pride, or for that matter, the entire pride is infected. The killer disease hangs like a question mark over the future of the magnificent Crocodile Bridge lions. For two years, Devault spends many nights in the open trying to establish the status of the lions. His findings are frightening. 99% of the lions in the southern part of the park test positive for TB. Got an amazingly tough mosquito. But the overwhelming majority of the lions in the park still look healthy. Default is challenged by other scientists and veterinarians. They want to know from him, are lions that are infected worse off than those that are not infected? Will all infected lions die? And how soon will they die? Devault has no answers. A tragedy of this nature and this magnitude has never before been recorded. It is not even known how many other wild species are infected with the deadly bacteria. To get scientific answers, Default decides to embark on a comparative study. In the northern part of the park, he identifies three prides that are free of TB. After testing them, he collars 16 lions with radio tracking collars. In the southern part of the park, he knows the positive prides around the big dams. The Crocodile Bridge Pride, the Gomodwane Pride, and the Mashlangazwane. He identifies various individual lions in these three prides and collars five lions in each pride. Today, after two years of monitoring, the southern lions are starting to show signs of sickness. Their ribs show. Their coats and eyes are dull. The once mighty crocodile bridge pride of lions is slowly but surely disintegrating. The social organization of lions, where individuals fit into the hierarchy of the tribe, is complex. This means that when even one dominant male or female dies, it's more than an individual tragedy. It can fundamentally alter the way in which the tribe operates and interacts. One cannot help but draw the analogy. These lions are like humans living with AIDS. One wonders if they too are feeling tired and sick all the time. 
How long can they exist in these harsh conditions before their immune systems fail irreversibly? The terrible truth is that there is no cure for these lions. Administering medication to hundreds of free-ranging lions is an impossible task. The wild lions will have to be kept in an enclosure, fed by humans, shot with medicated darts every day. All this without knowing for certain whether it will work. The only hope is a TB vaccine, but that could take many years to develop. Default believes the climax of his research and the tragic consequences for the Cougar Park lions will be realized this coming winter. It is during the winter months that the abundant water sources dry up and the lions have to move further out to hunt for prey. And buffalo are an easier target than many animals fleeter of foot. Killing buffalo means that more TB bacteria are consumed through the intestinal tract of the lions. The more sick buffalo they eat, the greater the infection, and slowly they lose their strength to hunt. What can be the solution? There have been suggestions that all buffalo in the park should be wiped out. Yet Devault believes that such a drastic measure will not stop the spreading of the disease. Will this winter be the final blow for the biggest and oldest lion prize of Cougar National Park? In the wild, a real life drama is unfolding. A lone veterinarian is a helpless witness.